Here's a vintage Toshiba Satellite Pro 420 CDS slash 810. It's model number PA1225U VCD. I have no idea how old it is. Probably back from the Windows 95 days, probably even maybe before then. The top of the unit. Toshiba Satellite Pro. Front has a speaker, not stereo. An actual volume control with a stop and a headphone out. If we come over to this side, you have a line out and microphone, power button. Um, probably those are PCMCIA. That is a strange connector and a serial port. We'll get back to that in a second. A Kensington lock port of some sort, or a lock port of some sort. On the back, that's PS2 keyboard or mouse with a splitter you can use, fan. And look at that for a power connection. Yep, this is one of those rare laptops that has a built-in power supply. Docking connector here. See if I can get that open for you, so you can get an idea what that looks like. Parallel port VGA, infrared window, some more vents over here, and a compact disk drive. And look, a manual control on the screen. Once opened, here is the screen. It's a Satellite Pro 420 CDS. Intel inside Pentium processor. Oh, a dreaded Energy Star label. Oh my. Microphone. Pretty plain Jane here. Nothing too spectacular. This appears to be a little not in place for some reason. I don't know why, but it just is. Track point type thing. Buttons is. And uh, I had a lot of trouble with this machine. The machine will not boot from CD, just like that IBM ThinkPad 7060LD, which I will be getting back to uh, in the future. Uh, in order to load this thing, I had no way of booting the Windows disk or booting off of anything else because there's no floppy drive and I have nothing to swap in. A while ago, I reviewed this other Toshiba laptop that has a webcam on it. And it actually has an external floppy drive. The connector is the same, and it does plug into it, and maybe we'll check it out. That's what would plug into that weird connector there. Now, at the time, like I said, I didn't have the other laptop, so I had no way of doing that. And the only way I was actually able to get Windows installed on this was to remove the hard drive, connect it up inside another machine, and start the Windows 98 installation. Once it gets to a certain point, I can power the machine off, replace the drive in here, put the Windows 98 disk in here, and it will continue on with its installation. But that was the only way I was able to do it at the time. Should I have had the floppy drive then, I would have been able to boot up with that, access the CD-ROM drive, and start the installation right from there. I haven't powered this thing on in easily five or six years. I have no idea what's going to happen if it even still works. But let's plug power in and see what uh, what happens with it. Oh, a green clean light. That's a good sign. Press the power button. And it doesn't like that kind. I seem to remember I had some sort of trouble like this before. I'm pretty sure the battery doesn't work in it. And now it just shows that. Let's see what happens if we cycle power. Unplugged. It's green. I bet if I try to power it, same thing. Goes out and turns red. There's no battery in this unit. I don't know if I have it. I don't think so. Nor would it make any difference if I did. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe I'll have to leave it for a while and I'll just keep playing with it. See if I get it to power on. That's where the hard drive lives. I'm not going to pull it for now. Although, 
It's not actually even mounted in there, it just sticks in. I guess we could try. Mm, it doesn't want to budge for now, so we'll leave it. We'll see if I get it powered up. This little door here you lift up, and it's actually the eject for the optical drive. Just for fun, it's got a weird thing that it mounts to for a weird connector. Just touch that thing, and the plastic is so brittle it just snapped. It's real thin stuff, but I did pull the hard drive. This is a uh, Hitachi. It doesn't say anything about Death Star on it. Made in the Philippines, and it doesn't say the size. But look, it's 8X. Wow! It's one of these thicker variety drives. I have no idea what the capacity is offhand. Maybe we'll try powering it without the hard drive. I have high hopes. Same green clean light. And same flashing red. So I guess I'll leave it plugged in for a while and we'll see if it'll do anything later. Well, I've left this thing for a while and unfortunately all it will do is flash the red light on there. Sometimes if I hit the power button it'll turn green for a second, but then it's just dead afterwards and even now it's not even responding to that. Uh, something... Sometimes things happen and you sort of forget about it. This may have been one of those things where it was working and then it crapped out and then I looked it up and found that, oh yeah, the power supplies that are inside of these things are garbage. And uh, it happened to this and I completely forgot about it and forgot that it doesn't work. But I remember I did have it working at one point and I did have it running Windows 98, which is probably still on that drive. And there's just nothing I can do now because it certainly doesn't pay to look into getting a machine like this running and tearing it apart isn't really going to do any good either. So unfortunately this is going to be a non-working one. I'm sorry but uh, either I forgot or it crapped out in the time it was sitting. Sometimes these things happen. So anyway, thanks for taking the time to take a look at a Toshiba Satellite Pro 420 CDS. Make sure you click like, make sure you click subscribe, and take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.